my Sears Tower. Good morning everyone from Tucumcari, New Mexico, standing outside the historic Blue Swallow Motel. Just stayed the night here and this is one of the most beautiful, best preserved motels I have ever stayed at in my life. I can't recommend it enough, but we have a lot to do today. So just checked out and the, the plan today will be New Mexico. We'll be leaving Tucumcari shortly and heading west through Albuquerque and landing in Gallup, New Mexico tonight where we'll be staying at another historic motel along Route 66. So it's another packed, fun-filled day here on Route 66. This is, got to think here, how many days have we been on the road now? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. This is day five, June 7th on Route 66 and this is state number six. We are traversing across the great state of New Mexico, the land of enchantment. So follow me. We've got a lot ahead here on Route 66, the Mother Road. Well, here is our hotel room and look at this room. It looks like it hasn't changed in 60 or 70 years. The beds have these old style quilts with flowers on them. You have these old landscape paintings on the walls and check out this old dial phone, this rotary phone, it still works. This was probably the gem of this hotel. Check this out, it's an old school TV from back in the 1950s. Now this does not work, but just the fact that they have it is amazing. It's an RCA, that is a gem right here. And I was told that these chairs, the desk chair and this bench are original from the 1940s. You can see the ice box has the Blue Swallow Motel to come carry Route 66 on it. And the bathroom is actually one of the most beautiful bathrooms I've ever seen. I don't say that very often, but look at this tile work. This is original, just amazing how well preserved this tile is, and look at this old sink from when the hotel opened, as well as the mirror and these windows. Look how cool these windows are. They've got leaves ingrained in the glass and these walk-in showers with the same tile as well. Look at this old plumbing, the way these pipes arch around the bathroom door. I have never seen that before. That is so cool. Yeah, that hasn't been touched since the 1940s. So, one of the most beautiful, well-preserved motels I have ever stayed in. Also, look at this stained glass light on the ceiling. It's almost like a Tiffany light. This is beautiful it's even got this brass bracket on the side but just just gorgeous the blue swallow motel this is what you can expect if you stay here just a beautiful cozy room from days gone by had to get one more picture of Bob Waldmeyer there in his hippie van he was a famous artist here on route 66 and he's from Illinois originally. So I had to do a shout out to Bob Waldmeyer. He passed away in 2009, but he's a Route 66 legend. This motel is very unique because it's a motor court. You drive your car up into these garages and each room has a garage connected or assigned to it. So 
It's one of the few motor court motels that still exists here in the United States. So Robert is the name of the owner and current manager of the Blue Swallow Motel. He and his wife took over as management of this place two years ago in 2020, and he's originally from the Chicagoland area, from Wheaton, Illinois. Well, I've lived in Schaumburg, Illinois for the last nine years and am moving to Phoenix, so I have a little surprise for him. I've got a bottle of Malort. Let's see how he reacts when I present this to him. Listen, Robert, listen, I, I have a surprise for you right yeah. here. A token of my appreciation uh, oh. from Chicago. <laughs> now, yeah. if that is not a Chicago original, uh, Malort. Uh, boy, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> you really, uh, you really, I, I got a question if you like the place or not. You're providing it's, Malort. <laughs> it's not a bad spot. It's not no. a bad spot, but a little taste of Chicago. Uh, my friend, can carry. between uh, meeting you, having our conversations, yeah. Um, all I can say is best of luck to your next venture. And when you come on through, let's talk Chicago and have some alert. Absolutely. I love that. Thank you much, sir. Yeah. Thank you much. Nice to meet you. Yep. Take care. Let it be known that if you ever stay the night at this beautiful motel, you have my full permission to take a shot of Malort with Robert. You can see the bottle is still there behind the front counter at check-in. Right across the street from the Blue Swallow Motel is the Tipe Curios. Look at this awesome building. The teepee and everything protruding from the front. I think it's just a gift shop, but I don't know. I'm going to find out. And look here. We have the Helk. The Helk of Tipe Curios. <laughs> I see, it's awesome. Some satanic looking elk creature stands guard he's got look at this it's like a stick of bones with a skull on it now it's an elk skeleton but a lot of route 66 roadies and and people that love to travel route 66 have coined this the helk and for good reason outside the teepee curios loving this signage chukum carry really does have the best neon signs so far on the route. It's like something straight out of a Mad Max movie. The Helk. It is really, really cool. <laughs> they should totally make a horror movie about this demonic Helk that stalks travelers along Route 66. I would totally watch that. Downbound truck. <laughs> Downbound truck. Yeah, the truck even has a bullet hole in the middle of the windshield like somebody was trying to shoot at the Helk. Dun dun dun! All right, let's, let's go inside. Let's get away from the Helk. So long, Mr. Helk. Don't sacrifice me. All right, let's go inside and check out the TP Curios. Let's take a peek, shall we? Well, I feel better inside because Clint Eastwood is here to protect me from the Helk that is lurking around the parking lot. You looking at me? A lot of really awesome souvenirs. You got New Mexico coffee mugs, Tucum Carry, Route 66. They've got these decorative tiles you can purchase, coasters. And these blankets are incredibly soft, $14.99 each. A lot of Western posters and boards, John Wayne. You got old classic Chevys, cars, gas signage. They have everything here. Look at all this beautiful pottery, some rocks and stones, this animal skull, a dinosaur egg. Is that, is that real? It says that's a hadrosaur dinosaur egg. And this guy just chilling out here on the shelf. Howdy, partner. And I really like these old Winchester gun posters. That's awesome. The kind that gets them. Devil Brand Coffee. And I love this Highway Route 666 with this devilish woman. No speed limit. What is that? Oh, the Highway to Hell. Now yeah, that makes sense, Route 666. And look, it's my hometown, Spirit Lake, Iowa, where they make Indian motorcycles now. That's so cool. I've never seen 
that poster before, but yeah, there's my hometown. It represents Spirit Lake. That was really cool. There's the mo the Motel Safari here on the left. Another famous vintage sign. Check out La Cita. This is a famous Mexican restaurant here in Tucumcari. And look how unique this architecture is. I love that, the big sombrero in the front, beautiful artwork of the burrow on the side of the building. And we've got someone painting the place too, making it look good. A new, brighter touch-up to La Cita, the Mexican restaurant here in Tucumcari. Unfortunately, it's not open right now. They open at 11 a.m. for lunch. And we've got to hit the road. We've got to keep moving. We've got a lot of mileage on the Mother Road to cover today. But I had to see this building. It's iconic. And next time I'm here, I promise I'll stop and eat at La Cita's. Well, we are at Loretta's here in Tucumcari. This is going to be my first real meal here in New Mexico. I got the breakfast tacos. And uh, the reason I say that is because we got in late last night. Um, so the only restaurant Tucumcari is kind of a small town. The only restaurant open was Taco Bell. So we had a meal of shame. Our, my first meal in New Mexico last night was Taco Bell, and it was like the worst Taco Bell I've ever had in my life. So I'm making that up today with some genuine tacos here in New Mexico. So without further ado, breakfast taco at Loretta's here in Tucumcari. Mm. Oh my gosh, night and day, night and day from Horrible Taco Bell. This is so much better. In fact, this is one of the greatest breakfast tacos I've ever had. Oh. And we got chorizo and the egg. It's got some spices on it and the green peppers here are fantastic. Very, very good. Made up for last night, 100%. The Route 66 Monument, just outside of Tucumcari, New Mexico. This is one of my favorite sculptures on the Mother Road. Look at this thing. It's got like the Corvette wing on the back with the lights. Route 66. And there she is, the Mother Road, heading westbound towards Albuquerque. Just notice this too, they've got the road wrapping around the bottom of this sculpture. What does that say? A little information here. Roadside attraction, artist Thomas Coffin, 1997. It's a thing of beauty. Well, we are here at the Blue Hole in Santa Rosa, New Mexico. Now this is a natural pond and the water is incredibly blue. It's very clear and it's 81 feet deep. 81 feet deep and the water apparently is 61 degrees Fahrenheit, which is rather cold for water down here in New Mexico, but I have jumped into frozen water before in my past in Okaboji, Iowa for the Winter Games. I, I, I did a polar plunge. It's a video, you can watch it. I can link it on my on after this. Uh, but I'm so a little nervous. It's been a while since I've jumped into, oh yeah, this is cold. So you can see I am, got my, up to my knees right now. I might even just jump in to this first to get acclimated and then dive. But uh, basically I'm gonna be diving off of that cliff into this 61 degree water here. Yes, this is freezing. And look how pale I am for being in Chicago for the last winter. Dude, I think we need to just, just get acclimated here first. Oh my God. And then we'll do the jump. No? Boy, you're nuts. <laughs> you look pretty good, man. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm ready. I think you just have to jump. All right. Oh my god. Oh 
my gosh. All right, Eric, you've done, you've done worse. You've done a polar plunge. Yeah, once you get in, get into it. Yeah, it feels all right. It's all right. But uh, ready when you are. Definitely at first. This is the coldest water I've been since frozen Lake Okaboji. Even though that was 31 degrees. <laughs> It's but like cold water say. is supposed to be healthy for <laughs> you. Me, right here. It's supposed to be. Cold is cold. <laughs> I feel like you have to get your head under though. Did you get all the colors? <laughs> to get over that initial shock. Okay. Alright man, do it. Let's do it. Okay. Alright, we're gonna go jump off that cliff into this very cold water. I think we're as acclimated as we are going to get at this point. So. No scuba diving. Oh, scuba diving. I thought you, yeah, I thought you, I thought you said, has anyone died in this? Died? No. <laughs> it's no. I thought you said, I'm like, why are you asking them that before we jump? All right. So here is, this is the rock. And should we do it? Yeah, let's go. All right, we're gonna go jump off this rocky cliff. And yeah, I wanna do it quicker because my body is heating up now. And I wanna be acclimated to the coldness. You guys go, I wanna go All right. Now I've done some cliff diving before in the Ozarks. It's been like 10 years. Well, they're not doing it together. Yeah, this is cr the craziest thing I've done so far on Route 66. <sighs> All right, so here we go, dude. It's actually not that high up. All right, dude. We're about to jump off this rocky ledge into a cold pond. All right, Cody, you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Route 66. Let's do this. <laughs> ah! Oh, oh, oh my God, we made it. Good job, Connor. Oh, it actually feels good right now. Oh, that was pretty wild. I have, it's been a while since I've jumped off a cliff. And that's definitely the most daring thing I've done so far on Route 66. Oh, snorkeler. Gotta watch out for snorkelers. All right. You know, the water feels great though, actually. Feels good. I could do it again. Maybe a cannonball. Yeah, you can do a cannonball. All right, these girls are going next. Let's see if they can do it. So they're they're trying to get the their courage to jump. I don't. Nope. Still can't touch. Just wondering if I could still touch here or not. Whew. All right. Well, there you have it. We have done the cliff dives of the blue pond here at Santa Rosa, New Mexico. Yes, and I'm moving to Phoenix, so I definitely need to tan a lot. I kinda wanna do it again. Okay. Yeah, at least one more time. At least one more time. We're here, we're here. <laughs> May as well do it. Underwater shot. Yeah, you actually can see really well here at the blue pond. Or the blue hole. The blue hole. I keep saying blue pond. The blue hole. And actually the water feels great now. It was freezing at first, but I like it. we're used to it now. We're acclimated. It feels very good. It feels refreshing in the hot desert sun of New Mexico. I think we're gonna do one more jump off of the rock ledge. And then we gotta keep moving on down. The mother road here in New Mexico. Yeah, this is fun though. It's cold, but it's you gotta do it once. See the blue hole. It's always warm. It's always warm. <laughs> She's like, oh no! I know the straggler. It always makes it worse. Just get it over with. Nice. Very good. They look good, man. 
one more time here in the blue pond at Santa Rosa. Let's see if I can do a cannibal. All right, three, two, one. Go, Bunga! I don't know how my form looked. Hello. Are you gonna jump? Eventually. All right. Well, the water feels great once you get acclimated to it. See, we'll watch this guy jump. Nice. Good job. Whew. So this pond is 81 feet deep below me here. It's 81 feet deep. It's crazy. Oh man, I need to swim more. <laughs> Definitely need to swim more. All right. Well, cool. good job, Connor. Good job, Eric. We did the blue hole of Santa Rosa. It is cold at first, but overall refreshing. And it's a daring thing to do. This is probably the most extreme thing I've done so far on the mother road on Route 66. So we gotta head out. We'll dry off in the hot desert sun. But we're heading towards Albuquerque, so let's go. Good job! What they didn't tell you is the Loch Ness Monster lurks below. <laughs> but that's, that's just Scotland. There's no, there's no Nessie of Santa Rosa. At least not that I know of. There could be a, a creature lurking down below. I think it just might be scuba divers. Huh? And yes, they do scuba diving here. It's deep enough and clear enough to scuba dive. Just some warning signs for divers. Do not get the bends. The bends, the bends isn't something you want. It's a good Radiohead album though. <laughs> Pulled over here just east of Albuquerque, New Mexico. There's a historic marker noting the edge of the plains. This is where grassy plains meet pine dotted uplands as these lands transition from the Great Plains in northeastern New Mexico to the Basin and Range Province. This is a geographic region covering much of the western United States and northwestern Mexico. And wow, the elevation here is 6,500 feet above sea level. Where I'm standing right now is higher elevation than Denver, Colorado by almost a thousand feet. Actually, it is like a thousand feet. That's insane. It doesn't feel like I'm that high in elevation, but apparently here near Albuquerque, New Mexico, it's a higher elevation than the mile high city, Denver, Colorado. There it is, the giant metal yucca plant on Route 66, just outside Albuquerque. And look how rocky these mountains are outside of Albuquerque. I had no idea there was a mountain range near the city of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Stopping at the Al Cafe here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This place has been open since 1986, right off of Route 66. And take a look at that architecture. That is awesome. This giant owl protruding from the top of the building. And at night, those eyes glow brightly with the neon lights. And this is so cool. Definitely one of my favorite buildings I've seen so far along Route 66. And apparently they have very good New Mexican chili inside. So we're gonna go in and grab a bowl of chili. This is awesome. It's got a 1950s 
diner feel here at the Owl Cafe. And we got ourselves a, a stool. We settled up, sat down on the stool here, and look at this old school music player. It takes quarters. It's got all 1950s and 1960s music. And I was hoping they'd have Route 66 by Chuck Berry, but the, uh, they do have Chuck Berry. It's Sweet Little 16. Getting a couple cups of chili. You got the beans and the green chili on top. This is their specialty here at the Owl Cafe. And check this out. This is a chili. What is this called again? <laughs> Chimmy. And here we have a Chimmy Chili Dog. This is something I have never heard of in my life. It's a specialty here at the Owl Cafe in, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So we're getting a little bit of the taste of the American Southwest here. I'm looking forward to, to trying a bite of this. It looks absolutely delicious. Oh my yeah. gosh. Oh, there's a hot dog inside. Look at that. It's a chimichili dog. Oh, this looks amazing. Look at that thing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. Yeah, I can feed you guys. I can spoon feed you. I'm going to try to feed you beans and green chili here in Albuquerque. Oh, this smells really, really good. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god, that's really good. Yes, <laughs> I spell my That is really good. Try that, man. Very, very good. The green chili is legit. It's got that distinct flavor, and it's got a sting to it. That's awesome. Those beans are great, too. Great place for chili. Some of the best chili I've had anywhere. But New Mexico is the land of chilies. Isn't that what they say? It's also the land of manana. That's what I've been hearing a lot from locals. The land of Minana and the land of enchantment. So enchantment, chilies, and the land of, of Minana. So this is how you eat a chili, chili chonga. <laughs> I keep messing this up. Chimmy, chimmy chili. <clears throat> this is how you eat a chimmy chili dog. Oh my god. It's like a chimichanga mixed with a hot dog. That is fantastic. Oh my god, look at this. Oh, that's so good. Mmm. Mmm. This is phenomenal. Living in Chicago the last <clears throat> nine years, I'm used to Chicago sell hot dogs. This is fantastic. This is amazing. Thank you. This is a whole different twist on the hot dog. I love this. New Mexico style. You kind of could. Yeah, just eat it with your hands like a normal hot dog. So it's, the hot dog is in a hot pocket. Hmm. Very, very good. So you've, you've served Brian Cranston I've here. I've served Brian Cranston. Not here. Not here at all. Church Street Cafe in Old Town. Church Street Cafe in Old Town. Because yeah. they have a tour that goes from Old Town all the way to here. I've heard of that. Yeah, the, the, his name is Frank, the guy that runs the tour. Okay. I know him. He's a real good guy. He gets in the old the Winnebago that was in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He drives that around. Oh, that's so cool. He gives a tour. But you, so you met Brian Cranston. You said he's a good guy. <laughs> he's a good guy. Sat at table six every time he came in the okay. Church Street Cafe. <laughs> every time. So you, heard it, you heard it here. This man yeah. served Brian Cranston, said he's a good guy. Oh, he's and, a uh, guy. you know, I had to ask the question. We're in Albuquerque, yeah. New Mexico. It's such a popular show, Breaking Bad, and the Better yeah. Call Saul series. And apparently they filmed uh, some scenes from El Camino, the Breaking Bad movie, here yeah. at the Owl Cafe. Yeah. So... Yeah, there's, there's seems to be a connection guy. everywhere in town about in, that. And it was the night after the Golden Globes, and he, uh, you know, in the, 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 the awards, he was all in oh, the and everything, you know. And the next day he came in, and uh, he walked in in jeans and a hat. And yeah. <laughs> I went like that. Brian, is that you? <laughs> no, I didn't recognize you in that fa without that fancy tux you had on. Last he goes, "Ah, oh, shut up! Get away from me, man!" I said, "These are my clothes right here." Yeah. And he wears that hat. Oh, the Eisenberg yeah. hat. Yeah. Oh, that's he great. Wears that around. Yeah. He wears that around. That is awesome. Well, a little Breaking Bad connection here at the Al Cafe, just off of Route 66. 
Look at all of the little owls that they have perched along the perimeter of the restaurant. They're all sitting up there on the ceiling. That is so cool. Sticking with the theme. Got some more owl theming there along the wall above the restrooms. And of course, we're in Dr. Pepper country. I know Dr. Pepper comes from Texas, but a lot of the southwestern states seem to be advertising Dr. Pepper everywhere we've gone. I'll see you soon, Owl Cafe. I'll see you soon. A great cafe along Route 66. Here in Albuquerque, not far off of Route 66, is a giant red arrow sticking out of the ground. This thing is huge. It's got to be about 50 feet tall. And it's been here in 1961 in this parking lot, which is now a Whole Foods. But originally, this was an Indian Plaza shopping center. And that's why the arrow was placed here back in 1961. This is a really big arrow. And check this out here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, the Dog House, which is a fantastic hot dog joint along Route 66. This is Route 66 right here. But why I really stopped here is this is showcased in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, the two TV shows. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Now at night, the tail, it's actually a neon lit dog and the and the doghouse lettering lights up at night and you can actually see the the tail of the dog wagging but uh, just because this was in the breaking bad universe i had to stop and see this for myself this is freaking amazing heisenberg heisenberg saul goodman So I'm here in Old Town, Albuquerque, at the Candy Lady, and word on the street is, there's a guy named Walter White who goes by Heisenberg, and this is where you can get some of that blue sky, some of that good stuff. So we're gonna go inside and see if we can score. And look at this, walking in, there he is, Walter White and Jesse Pinkman from Breaking Bad, and they've got a Los Poyos Hermanos sign there too, or Gus Fring. The restaurant he ran in the show Breaking Bad. This is amazing. So she's hooking us up with some of the good stuff. Two dime bags, please. All right, thank you. And check this out. On top of that, they've got t-shirts with Breaking Bad themes on it. I got my bad on the candy lady. And they've got a Los Poyos Hermano shirt as well. And they've got some, uh, some other things here as well too. I, I, I don't know what's going on. It might be a bachelorette theme I, I don't I don't know so they make all of this flavored sweet hard candy here at this candy shop it's so good she's giving us some samples of the cotton candy so far is my favorite hands down they also make the uh, brittle here too here at the candy shop it's all fresh so fresh and so clean this is pinion brittle oh. is this your shop no it's it's Debbie she's owned it for about 42 years oh, okay. and I've been friends with her for that long and my mom's been working for her for 28 years. So the shop is older than the TV show? The oh, shop, way, older. way older. But then way she old. made me work here. She's and then me. she's my daughter so I've made her come she to work. She has to work today too. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. So um, she's showing us the secret stash. Look at all of this blue crystal meth candy. Connor. Here, tip it down. You can tip oh, it. Be, be careful. Oh. Don't drop that. Don't drop that. Yeah, I don't want to drop yeah, it. Yeah, we don't want to make Heisenberg mad. No, Cost and he would get mad. Money. Oh my gosh, look at all of this blue sky here that, in there Old there Town in Albuquerque. This is She's got the and fix. We, don't uh, tell Gus Spring about this. Then we bag it to our little they bag it here. dime bags. Mmm. <laughs> So you have the dime bags are a dollar or two dollars a piece? They're a dollar a piece. Dollar a piece. It's on sale right now. You buy in two, and I'm gonna treat you. Oh, thank you very so much. You can have so we just got um, our hook up here. And then here, I can move my purse. But this is where we put it all and how we distribute it. Oh, look at that. Huh. All right. 
Well, you won't tell us your secret recipe. No, that's... Yeah, I'll secret. tell it to you. You will tell it to us. <laughs> so that was easy. It's rock candy. <laughs> yeah. It's just rock candy and we dye it blue. Ah. Crush it. Rock candy here and they dye it blue. So it's it's yeah. not real crystal meth. Don't do drugs, kids. No, don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. It's just die. a TV show. It's just it's, a TV show. You can do the drugs, but then you get killed. Like then in you, the show. Then you <laughs> die. Yeah, yeah, then you die. Overdose of Cortels. Yeah. One or the other. One or the other. Something. And then you have to call Better Call Saul if you get into trouble. This is so freaking cool. Look at this. They've got the t-shirts, Breaking Bad t-shirts everywhere. Los Pollos Hermanos. And right here is some cutouts of Jesse Pinkman and Walter White. You can pose with them if you desire. And I'm loving this shirt. Let's cook. Say my name. How cool is this? This is amazing. And yes, you can get the candy, the hard candy, the blue sky crystal meth hard candy right here. We got the hookup here at the Candy Lady, and we just made a fresh batch of Blue Sky. So come and get it here at the Candy Lady. There's plenty for everyone, but uh, just don't tell Gus Green. We, we don't want him to know. <laughs> right, Walt? Yeah, and he gets it. I mean, look at this. They've got coffee mugs, Breaking Bad galore, and they even have these amazing Pez dispensers of all the Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad characters. Oh, it doesn't get cooler than this, especially if you are a fan of the Breaking Bad universe. And also, Albuquerque does RV tours. I'm not gonna do one today, we don't have time. We gotta hit the road to keep continuing westward on Route 66, but look at that. They do RV tours of the movie sets and the scenes that were filmed here in Albuquerque. She is feeding us so much food. That's called Panucci. Panucci. Uh, it's not an 80-year-old recipe. Debbie's mother. Really? Oh, wow. oh, that's fantastic. It's all made out of rice. Oh, really? <laughs> There's no peanut butter in there? Oh. Mm. I almost thought it was going to be peanut butter, but that's very, very good. This is amazing. It's called Panucci. <laughs> so come here not just for the, the blue sky crystal meth candy. Don't do drugs, kids. But they've got panucci. This is peanut butter crunch. Ooh. Now, this is an accident because Debbie's mom was trying to make something a hard And she just said, oh, I'm just going to put the peanut it's butter. It's just like a butterfinger. With extra butter. Mmm. Isn't it good? It's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So do I have you totally confused now? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Yeah, I think I can figure it out. But yeah, a little bit. <laughs> now we just, we'll just buy everything. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. We have the largest assortment of sugar-free candy hmm. around, so diabetics can come in and try all of our sugar-free. There you go, diabetics. It's sugar-free, chocolates, and candy. Oh. This wonderful shop here in Old Town, Albuquerque. This is the Candy Lady, and I have to say this is one of the best candy shops I have ever been to. And it's extra special when you have a show like Breaking Bad, and they and they love. They love the characters, they, they love that world, and they showcase their own version of that world here at the candy shop. And also they've got Route 66 memorabilia, because Route 66 comes through town as well. So a little bit of everything here at the Candy Lady. Oh, that was amazing, holy cow. So the Candy Lady here in historic district of Albuquerque, New Mexico, jeez. If you love candy, if you love Breaking Bad, and you love Route 66, this is the place for you. This is a moment I have been waiting for for a long time. Twisters is the name you see, but this fast food restaurant was actually the setting for Los Pollos Hermanos, Gus Fring's restaurant that he owned in Breaking Bad. This was his cover for his meth industry. And we are about to go inside and grab a taco before hitting the road here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now what is also cool is this is the old Route 66 that goes right in front of this. The pre-1937 Route 66, the OG. And it's right in front of Twisters, which was where Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul was filmed as 
Los Poyos Hermanos. This is this is awesome. All right, let's go inside. Oh my gosh, I'm walking in. They still have the signage up. Los Poyos Hermanos. That is so cool. Well, here we are inside Los Poyos Hermanos. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Like literally, I feel like I walked into a movie set and it really in, in some sense I have. This is where they filmed a lot of those scenes with Gus Fring here in this restaurant uh, for both the shows Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. And just upon ordering a couple tacos, the front desk or the cashier, I should say, said that they are actually coming back next week to film some more things here. Even though the latest season of Better Call Saul is airing currently, they are, apparently the, the production team is coming back to film a couple more scenes here at Los Poyos Hermanos. So this wall that you see here, the production team tore this wall down while filming last year, and the restaurant built it back up, but now they have to tear the wall back down again next week in time to film. So there's still filming going on here at Los Poyos Hermanos. Oh, this is just so cool. And of course, my brother and I are gonna be sitting at this booth, which is where the actors sat in the film. It's where Heisenberg sat. And over in the corner, there's what it looks like when production is underway. That's not twisters, you see, it's Los Poyos Hermanos, look at all this Breaking Bad pictures, autographs, tributes that people have written because of their love for the show. And there's Vince Gilligan, the creator and writer and director of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, signing his name here. There's that awesome logo for Los Poyos Hermanos, the two chicken brothers. And look at this, you got all of the characters' faces lined up right here. Oh, this is amazing. And of course, you've got Brian Cranston with his autograph on the wall, and Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston in the booth right there that my brother and I are about to eat in. So this is amazing. Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul filmed here. Of course, they've got like a little makeshift meth lab. No, this this isn't the real deal. It's just a prop. But they've got a, some of the blue sky in a test tube. So instead of ketchup, mustard, hot sauce, and other condiments, you've got a meth lab prop here at Twisters, which, again, was the original Los Poyos Hermanos. All right, Connor, let's cook. Or eat some delicious tacos. Let's do that too. <laughs> you the whole time. It's never a dull moment. <laughs> I got you bought another white shirt today. I'm like, oh, you're just spill. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bound to happen. It's bound to happen. Tacos up. Cheap. Ah, <laughs> uh, you have the one who knocks. <laughs> Say my name. <laughs> Say my name. <laughs> Very good tacos. Here at Los Poils. Hermanos. Thank you, Gus. It'd be kind of funny if you farted in the booth. So you can tell people that you, you farted in the booth for Breaking Bad. You just did. I did just fart in the booth. <laughs> I, just, I farted in the Breaking Bad booth. Yes, I'm going to brag about that. If I ever would have brag about that to my, to my nie niece and nephew. <laughs> 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 my niece and nephew. My niece and I 
We are Los Pueblos Hermanos. <laughs> We are in western New Mexico on the way to Gallup and we are we're at Dead Man's Curve. This is Dead Man's Curve, that's what it says on Route 66. And uh, I, it's coming up pretty quickly. I think this is it. Is this Dead Man's Curve? This whole thing is Dead Man's Curve. Maybe this is Dead Man's Curve. This whole thing is Dead Man's Curve. But it doesn't... I, th I was expecting more of a dramatic curve, to be honest. I've seen worse. Ooh, here this we go. is Dead this Man's is Curve. Dead, ooh, here's Dead Man's Curve. <laughs> oh, wow. This is cool. Dead Man's Curve. Oh, wow. This is cool. All right. All right. <laughs> Do it right when the sun sets, so it's blasting in your face. That's how you die. Cool. That was Dead Man's Curve on Route 66. That, that was that was probably the most fun stretch of Route 66, right there. We're just driving. All right, we survived Dead Man's Curve here in New Mexico on Route 66. Dead men tell no. Hills. It's a roundabout. Rants, New Mexico. Well, we've made it to our final destination here in Gallup, New Mexico. Behind me is the historic Hotel El Rancho. It opened up in 1937 and was owned by R. E. Griffith, who was the brother of D. W. Griffith, was, who was a famous movie director in the early 20th century. So they actually hosted numerous movie stars from the golden age of Hollywood and did a lot of filming locations here around the Gallup, New Mexico area. So, so many stars have graced the hallways and the rooms of this historic hotel, including Jimmy Stewart, John Wayne, Burt Lancaster, to name a few. It has been another amazing day today, traveling Route 66 across the great state of New Mexico, but we are tired. It's late tonight. We finally got checked in at this amazing hotel that I can't wait to show you a little bit more of this place tomorrow, but for now, this is Eric with the Get Me Out of Here vlog, and it's time for me to get out of here. <laughs>